Hi guys, I'm back after some time of inactivity or rather a furious activity in my freelance life so I wasn't able to create any new tutorials. Which doesn't of course mean that I didn't work on my Heroes of Bronze short film project. Uh, I created some concepts, I worked on the script of the film and I also created some new assets. One of them that we will start creating today is right here on the screen. For that purpose we will be using mainly Blender 2.8 and for the texturing some Substance Painter. This series is aimed mainly at beginner Blender users, so I hope you like it and let's get to it. Now if you watched some of my previous tutorials you probably know this step. Yes that's right, here we are in Pure Ref, the best reference gathering software out there. Or at least the best I know of. If you want to learn more about it, you can just watch the first chapter of my Hoplite Shield tutorial. The link will be in the video and the description. As you can see, I've already gathered my reference images. At the top we have the concept I created. And we will actually be creating this whole environment in Blender and Substance Painter later on this channel. Right now, let's just focus on this column, or rather a pedestal. I'm not going to lie, I based its look on this game asset from Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which I just quickly took picture of on my phone and then dropped it onto the pure ref canvas. Then I went in and searched for some additional Greek engraving images to decorate the sides of the pedestal with. I was able to find these images. First, I liked this sitting lady playing the ancient Greek flute, or aulos as it was called. Also, I decided to sculpt these two guys crunching grapes with their feet. That's how they used to make wine back then. Then I have these ladies here. I chose this one over here. With the reference picked and ready on my second monitor, I then jumped straight into Blender 2.8. Okay, let's start with hitting Shift A and add a cube to the scene. With it selected, hit S to scale it and then Z to lock the scaling on just the vertical Z axis. The keyboard shortcut Ctrl Tab brings on this pie menu and from it you can jump to the edit mode. In this mode, if you hit Ctrl Tab again and switch to face selection mode instead of the vertex mode, uh, this way we will be able to quickly extrude the top face of our column. Now on my second monitor I have the reference images of the column and I'm looking at them constantly when modeling this piece of geometry. Based on them I start scaling this face and then hitting E and extruding upwards. You can always lock the axis of extrusion, here I'm hitting Z to just move the extruded faces up. Inspired by the shape of the Assassin's Creed asset, I start shaping the mesh and adding segments, always just hitting E to extrude, moving upwards, then scaling the faces in or out by hitting S. Here let's add the main segment of the pedestal, making it a little taller and then keep extruding. In this same manner, I finish the rest of this shape. Of course you can always jump into the orthographic mode and look at the model directly from the side. You do that up here, hitting this button and clicking on one of the axes. From this view I am able to polish the shape some more and add new extrusions. A very useful shortcut here is Alt double click, we will be using it a lot which selects your edge loops, so that you don't always have to manually select all the four sides of the loop. For the smaller piece of the pedestal, let's again start with Shift A and add a new cube. Be careful to do it in the object mode, otherwise your new mesh will become part of the old one if you add it in the edit mode. You can return to object mode from edit mode by simply hitting tab. Let's now place the cube on top of the larger pedestal. You can see that the origin of this new cube, this little orange dot here, is in its center. In this case I want it to be on the bottom part of the shape, 
So let's change it. You do that by going to the edit mode, selecting all your geometry by hitting A and then moving it up until the little dot is on its bottom face. In edit mode, when moving the whole geometry, your origin point always stays the same. So it's probably the fastest way to do this. When that's done, I can place it down on the pedestal and scale it the way I like. This shape is actually not a simple cube. It slants a bit towards one side. So let's go to the edit mode again, select one of the faces and scale it along the Y axis. Also, this upper face should be lower. When that's done, let's add some edge loops using the keyboard shortcut Ctrl R. Just place your mouse over the face you want to divide, hit the shortcut Ctrl R and a new edge loop will be placed directly in the middle of it. Now the same way we did with the previous mesh, just have the top face of the pedestal selected and by hitting E and then scaling with S, extrude it upwards. All this shaping is based on my reference images. Here you can see me selecting these edge loops by hitting ALT double click. If you want to then select more than one edge loop, just keep holding down ALT, hold SHIFT as well and click on another edge loop. It will be selected too. With all that active, I can push the geometry down to adjust the shape. What I want to do now is to drill holes here so that the middle is hollow. Let's start by adding some edge loops vertically here and here and also from the side. And since the other pair of edges is not that necessary, let's just ALT double click and dissolve it. Now you can select all the newly created faces in the middle, hit E and scale it inwards with S. Then just hit delete and get rid of the unnecessary faces. Maybe these legs are a bit too slanted for my taste. So what I do here is that I select these edges on the sides and scale them out along the Y axis. Also, I don't want to have missing faces back here. So just select the edges of the faces that are not connected and hit F. Like this, I just go around the model and start filling holes in my geometry. For now, let's not worry about the bottom faces of the model those connecting with the main pedestal, we will delete those later. Now all we need to finish the basic shape of our pedestal is the bronze bowl at the top of it. Let's again switch into the object mode and add a UV sphere. Place it atop of the smaller pedestal and to get rid of the ugly sharp edges go to edit mode by hitting Control tab, select all the faces with A and then from the faces menu choose shade smooth. As with any other command, with the Blender 2.8 version you can right click on it and choose to add it into your quick favorites. If you do so, you'll be always able to just hit Q and find these commands you favorited there. Ok, now let's make it an actual bowl. Go to edit mode, select all double click on this loop and then hit Ctrl plus to grow your selection until it spans half of the model. Then hit delete and choose faces. Since the origin is still in the middle of the object, you can just scale along the Z axis to squash it towards it. Now based on the model from Assassin's Creed, I want to add some ridges along the edge of the bowl. To do that, I go in and add two edge loops by hitting Ctrl R and placing them right next to this edge loop here. Then just edge loop select the middle edges and scale them in slightly. Repeat the process up here. If you now go back to the object mode and hit Ctrl 2, you subdivide your model so that its edges are smoother. If you find now that after smoothing your two ridges do not look the same, it probably means that the two added edges are not close enough to the center loop. To correct it, you can ALT double click select them and then hit G twice. This command will allow you to slide edges along a normal, which means it won't change the shape of your mesh. A very useful shortcut. Ok now, we're almost done. All we need now is to add a bit of thickness to this bowl. We can go in and extrude all the faces inwards, but let's rather use modifiers for this. Just navigate to this menu over here called modifiers. In the newer versions of Blender 2.8, this menu is probably on the left side of the properties tab. 
and from the pull-down choose Solidify. This will immediately give your model some thickness. You can adjust it here, even set a negative number if your model extruded outwards instead of inwards. So let's make it a little thicker, like 0.035 meters until it looks solid enough. And with that, the base of our bowl is finished. All we need to do now is just to clean up and polish the geometry a bit. We don't need these bottom faces of the small pedestal, so let's just get rid of them. And these as well. To make the visibility of the faces a bit better, hit this icon here to activate the wireframe mode. Here just find all your bottom faces and get rid of them. Also, since the bottom of these little legs is not perfectly straight, select their edge loops, hit S and then Z and type in 0 on your numpad. That will squash them to be perfectly in line. Then just pull them down under the surface a bit. Once we are happy with the shape of our model, we can hit Ctrl A and apply the scale so that all the scale information is reset. This way we won't get any error messages later in the sculpting phase. Now to make the edges of your model a bit less sharp, let's add a new modifier called Bevel. You go into the Modifiers tab again and find Bevel. Then just adjust the width of the bevel, make it a lot smaller number. And you'll see that the edges suddenly get this softer quality, uh, more realistic look. Also, let's add an edge loop here, so that after smoothing, this edge is sharper. Generally, the more edges you add, the sharper your result will be after smoothing. Now the last thing I want to do is to add some rectangular recesses in the middle of these faces here. Instead of creating them for all the four sides of the pedestal, let's actually use mirroring to speed up our workflow. The idea is that we will just work on one fourth of the model and then, since it's symmetrical, mirror it along X and Y axis. So first let's add an edge loop here and delete half of the model. With that, in object mode, add a modifier called mirror and check X axis. You can add one more edge loop here and delete the half of the half of the model. Then just check the Y axis here in the mirror modifier properties. Whatever we edit on this corner will automatically transfer on the other three corners. So let's just now add some edge loops and then select these middle faces here, hit E to extrude and pull those faces in a little. Don't forget to delete this middle face here that is created with the extrude. And here we go, a very quick solution to mirror edits on a symmetrical model. Now let's just tighten these edge loops here by adding new ones, making the ridges sharper. Also, let's add one more edge loop up here to make the top edges sharp as well when we later apply the solidify modifier. And that's it. With that, we have a proper base for our pedestal. Next time, we'll have a look at how to propagate different particles along curves, making the leaf and flower laurels. One more thing before you go, I wanted to let you know that I have this special Christmas discount for my Spartan Warrior course. So if you go to the link in the description and type in Heroes of Bronze 2018 in the discount code on my Gumroad, you will get it for just 10 bucks. And of course, Merry Christmas everybody. Have a good one.